Hey everybody, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. So we're going to do a little uh, education today video on the toy and engines, okay? And what transmissions to use with them. And I've been playing with a few. Um, right now, I can say that, you know, I can only tell you what's worked best for me. Um, your application might be a little different, but I want to kind of go over everything and do a real quick recap on the transmissions because I got a new one. And it's this one. This gear don't come on it here. This is your four speed um, gearbox with a reverse. It's actually a three speed with a reverse. This is, uh, there's your reverse in the back. It comes with a nice little cool stainless steel disc brake. And it works very well, actually. Uh, the gears are all metal. Okay. It's all stainless steel bodied and has like stainless screws with some brass connectors on it. And here's first, second. So the problem is you're going to have to keep, you're going to have to have two servos to run this. Because um, you can't have them both at the, in gear at the same time. In other words, if you're going to have first and second going, uh, reverse and third have to be in neutral because it's first, second, and then neutral. It'll be like a regular four speed gearbox. Third, then reverse is in the back. So you need two servos to run this. And these are pretty good. I mean, I have the, oh, the half version of this. It's just got that. It don't have the disc brake on it. Um, it's just a forward and reverse gearbox. But I thought it was cool to have a first, a second, a third, and a reverse. And um, that comes from, you can get these at um, Sterling Kit or Engine DIY. And I will put a link in the, the, video, uh, the comments below so you guys can do it. And if you go through my, uh, use my um, link there, you should get some first class treatment from these guys. Now this here is your Tamiya King Hauler one, and I want to show you the size difference of the King Hauler versus the the the, um, the one they sell at uh, Engine DIY and Sterling Kit. It's like seriously, it's like super short. It works well. It's a little heavy. Um, where you know these are plastic and aluminum and they're really light and. Uh, they, they, I mean, they're, they're pretty good. I mean, they're, they're pretty stout. Um, there are a couple of little problems with, you know, that I noticed is one, the idler shaft for reverse here don't have a bearing. It's just a, a gear on the shaft itself. And the gear, try to get it up in here where I'll focus. The gear hits the uh, little three millimeter nut. So you have to like, file that nut down or something I gotta do that to this one um, it, it does miss it I mean it does turn freely don't get me wrong you know but uh, you hear it go dunk, 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 dunk. and they have a little sticking problem like that right there where the gears are like trying to mesh you know but it's pretty cool that's second gear right there yep and then here's first gear and I'll, I'll go through the gears and show you the ratios I think it's three two and a half to two is what it is so the first first gear would be three to one you pull it out it's got to be a neutral if not it'll lock up there we go so if you watch back here that's first gear and we'll shift it into second gear a little faster and then we'll put it in third gear. Kind of fumble this here. I got giant fingers. And there's third gear. You can see it goes a lot faster. Yep. See what happens was when that goes forward, it locks it up. So you definitely need two servos. The cool thing is, is they did machine a big slot in these things here. You know, so if you did jam it in there, you have a, a nanosecond to get it out. So don't lock the thing up and break something like a drive shaft or you know 
anything, you know, clutch bearing pinions, anything like that. So, yeah, and this one here, this is the uh, the V400, the Toyin V400, that's their V4. And you see, I stuck that in my Capo JK Max. And uh, now there's not a lot of room in there. It's super tight under this thing because everything is like pretty much down to scale. And so I used, like I say, the forward reverse part of this. And on the shaft that comes out, I put a two-speed setup on it. So I got first, second, and forward and reverse. And I had butted it up to, mine didn't have the brake on it. I had butted it up to the factory transfer case that was in this. It just happened to so bolt right to the back of this thing here and a couple of bolt holes. And, uh, and like I say, the brake I didn't use because I'm running the four-wheel disc brake kit, you know, from Capo. But now, so... <laughs> We'll go to my RC four wheel drive one. Now this one here, I'm running the Traxxas Revo 3.3 tranny. I kind of like, I guess you could say I pioneered these things because nobody really had any of these out yet. And the only transmission I could think of would be the T-Max. But then I realized that the, the T-Max has a, like a clutch apparatus in there. And this is your Revo 3.3. Almost the same exact thing. The gear ratios are really close to the same. And, you know, this one don't have the brake. I bought this online. But there's, you know, you got your forward and reverse right there. And it's a straight shaft all the way through. And it's pretty cool. And this one here is the Red Cat Tornado. This is just a forward only with a two-speed. has a disc brake. And I bought this for the simple reason of... In that I had put a transfer case so I'm going to kind of peel everything here real quick and show you guys just how things fit pull that body off and it's not a uh, not a complicated thing now this is the my RC four-wheel drive blazer and you see I how the uh, Revo 3.3 tranny fits right in there now the problem is you have to use their whoops you have to use their rear drive shaft because if you see there's two pins in there that that hold the disc brake in place and you know that's what stops that's what stops the brakes but I use them front and rear so if you buy a Revo 3.3, buy the drive shafts too. There's you know, some cheap aftermarket ones out there that work pretty well. And being that these, you're not going to put these through the, the punishment of, uh, you know, the of the of the 3.3 or the T-Mac. They're going to hold up pretty well for you, you know. Oh, that's that. Now jump into this one this one I tried to make as scale as possible by adding you get a little heavy a little too big to cuddle there we go one hand in it see I added a uh, the two-speed transfer case on the back you see a bunch of lesion shit in it um, and then I'm running the Kyosho uh, nitro tracker forward reverse transmission and I'm running the two-speed clutch belt it goes right to the front of it and it actually works pretty good um, the one thing that I have learned is gearing and tire size have a lot to do with uh, you know how how the thing performs and everything now this one here is you know the v4 it it is a a wide engine it's pretty tight um, but is even tighter underneath as you can see how i had set that up and i bolted that transfer case right to the back of that little transmission it's squeezed in there you can hardly see it but that's your forward reverse gearbox and then i actually put a two speed on the front so it has first second gear now this thing is wicked heavy i mean it's it's up there you know 
and uh, it has the more weight, the tire size. I ran a smaller tire on the thing to, you know, try to to give me some low end nut there. And so it all depends on your clutch bell, your your spur gears, and all that. But they only make so many, so you're going to have to start mixing and matching. And that's what I started doing. And um, when you mix and match things, you got to do a little alterations and all that. So far, the the Kyosho Nitro Tracker transmission um, is working out pretty well in this thing. And I'll pop the top forward so you can see how I set this up in here. I did the video, you guys probably seen some of that, but um, one thing I, I'm going to go over a little gear ratio um, stuff for you here. And uh, that way you'll be able to, you know, to figure out what you what you if you have something laying around junk box what you got to order if you want to build one now whoop, there we go and you see that thing just sits right in there nice and small and then i got a little jack shaft going to the transfer case and my forward neutral reverse is right here the two speeds here now it's got this cover on it okay right now i'm running a 43 and a 39 tooth gear uh, the 43 is tight in there, so I'm going to have to yank this cover off if I want to do something to go bigger. Or I could get a smaller clutch bell. So I've ordered a clutch bell, which is coming hopefully this week. Because I'm on vacation, and I'd like to kind of get some of this stuff worked out so I can run it. That's the reason in my last video I said I put the smaller tires on it. Because I was running a taller 1.9 um, with the Dick Pack tires on the thing and so I made a smaller tire to bring the gear ratio down you know in the thing and these are your you know your mud slingers you know or two four wheel drive or these are scale four by four mud slingers but um, you know it handles pretty good and it actually you know it does you know it does tear up the terra firma pretty good so you know if you're if I drop it down, I think I ordered a, oh, what was it, a 17 and a 13 or 11 tooth or something like that for this thing. Because you got to play with your sizes so they mesh with the gears you got. So that should be coming. Then I'll be able to run my taller tire again. Um, and when it's in low range, it cranks pretty good. I tried to get a video today, but we had these hellacious winds up here. And they were, you know, shredding everything. So, but the, uh, let me drop my camera down here. But the, uh, my, <laughs> my camera kept falling over and everything else. And it was a, you know, it was a real, um, stress fest. I'll put it that way. So anyway, like I say, you got three different trucks, three different toying engines, you know, the FS 100 over here, the single cylinder, and the L200 two cylinder, and then you got the V4, you know, 400 four cylinder. And so far, the uh, the low 200, this was a big investment. The uh, the V4 was like 13, 1400 bucks for that motor and or engine, and it was it's cool and everything, but I, I think the uh, your little L200 there. You know, it, it's got it's lighter, it's got a lot more to offer, and it fits in like the HGP 407, like it was made for it. And so, you know, the the little single cylinder toy in, uh, it's strange. It does move things around, but you can't get, um, you can't get your rig too heavy. You know, it's got to be super light. And, uh, and if you notice, I got a metal fan on this one. Yeah, you won't be able to buy that. I made that fan because I had it in that. And when it shifted into second gear, the servo would jump up. And and, uh, and when it jumped up, it blew the fan blades right off of it. And they're only like five bucks through uh, engine DIY and Sterling kit. But the, uh, the more bang for the buck right now, I think, is the... Uh, is the L200. It's got plenty of torque. It's a longer stroke. It's got two carbs. It looks great, you know, 
and it looks like your you know your Nissan Toyota high performance engines that they had and it fits right in the Yoda very well but so like I say we got three different trucks three different motors or engines and three different transmission choices in these things and my favorite one so far is the Kyosho um, nitro tracker with the cheap two-speed gearbox you can buy on eBay um, when the clutch comes I'll do another run video of it and I'll play with some tire sizes because I know not everybody wants to run one nines they'd like to you know you sometimes you're out you know goofing around out in a terra firma there in the mud you're gonna need some taller taller stuff to give you some height there to get over things um, but if you see my video when it was in low gear um, you know it would just sit there and smoke the tires which is pretty cool so if I can get to do that in high gear that means that when it's in low gear it's gonna be a better crawler so it'll be able to like you, know, you won't be jumping over things or lunging into trouble with it you'll be able to crawl over things that's my that's my thoughts my game plan so anyway I think that's about all I got to show you here um, you know any questions comments feel free to hit me up um, like I say I'll keep on creating as long as you guys keep on watching um, even if you don't watch I'll probably still create and do my own thing but so like share subscribe tell your friends um, hit that like button too that that helps me out a lot I guess it puts me you know it puts my videos out there and uh, I guess my ratings have been really dropping lately I don't know why um, I don't know if it's because of the pandemic going on or you know people you know can't afford their cable bills or their device um, data I don't know I know it's rough out there and I want you guys to stay safe and you know and the cool thing is even if you don't have stuff to buy you can make yourself a little wish list and if you're you know you're sitting around you don't have a job or something like that you break out your box of junk and and you know one of your RC's or something like that just start messing around you know I mean it's good therapy keeps your mind occupied and uh, it's, it's a productive thing which I like to do I like to put up productive videos and you know kind of like feed you guys mind to make some cool stuff too I've noticed a lot of people out there have followed my builds and uh, they're building their own and I love that that's awesome that's that was what I wanted everybody to do you know to, like to bring the you know anybody can buy an RC in a box you know but to take one and put your own personal touches on it and I've seen some super ideas out there so anyway you guys have a great uh, week there and I'll catch you later man adios